Hello guys, have you noticed that if you have a seeder for specific data, if you run that with DB seed, then it shows the time. So seed it in some milliseconds or some seconds. And this happens if you call that from database seeder as a separate seeder. In this video, I want to show you how Laravel calculates that and how can you use the same calculation in your other places like artisan commands, for example. And this in fact will be not a Laravel lesson, but more a PHP lesson because that calculation comes from PHP syntax. Let's take a look. So if we take a look at the user seeder class, it extends the seeder. And seeder is inside of Laravel framework. And if we scroll down to the call function, here's the three lines that we need to care about. And I remember exactly this kind of measurement from long, long time ago when I started learning PHP. It was PHP 4 at the moment, like 15 years ago or something. People were measuring it like this at that time and it's still relevant to this day. So first, you get the start time by using microtime function from PHP. Then you do some action like invoke, for example, and then you do micro time again to calculate the finish time, then do minus start time and then format the difference however you want. So if we, for example, copy paste the same three lines into our own some custom artisan command, for example, which have prepared here process users command. So successfully executed in seconds and we need to calculate those seconds. So let's paste those start time, micro time, then instead of seeder invoke we have user factory so the same thing seeding a thousand users and then we calculate the seconds by doing the same number format from start time and this is irrelevant anymore we do that with two decimals with milliseconds and if we launch that artisan command of users process we have 812 seconds which is incorrect it's in fact milliseconds so we need to either do ms here or we can reformat, for example, not multiply that by 1000. And then if we relaunch that command again, it will show us 0 0.82 seconds, which is exactly what we needed. So that micro time function is a global PHP function, so you can use it anywhere. My example is from artisan command. You can do that in some kind of service, some kind of controller or whatever. If we click on micro time and see what's inside, the parameter get as float is set to true and then the float in seconds is returned. And actually let's experiment for example and do this info from artisan command start time. How does it look with or without that parameter? So with that this info, this is the result. If we don't specify the true here, then the result will be different. We'll launch that again and see the result. And of course there's an error here because the calculations then is incorrect. So this result is kind of meaningless to us for calculations. So if you want to do that, do micro time with true as float. So this is a quick tip if you want to measure the performance. And speaking about performance, if you care about that a lot, one of my latest courses is called Better Eloquent Performance. So if you want to learn how to make your database work faster, or in fact, Eloquent ORM to work faster, how to optimize queries, how to use Query Builder versus Eloquent and stuff like that, check out that course or subscribe to my yearly membership to get 24 courses at the moment for $99 per year plus taxes if that applies to you. And by subscribing to yearly membership, you actually make this YouTube channel continue because then I don't have to spend time marketing my courses. I better spend time shooting free videos here on YouTube for you guys. See you guys in other videos.